Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post no tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am doing my other little sister's hands. I have two younger sisters and two older siblings. Just wanted to throw that out there. She is the youngest one and I was so excited to be doing her nails as well. If you guys missed out on my other little sister's nail video, I will leave that linked so you guys can check it out. They did such fun summer sets, so I am so excited to be sharing that with you guys. I'm getting started by just buffing off the shine from her natural nail. Using my rechargeable e-file from Kiara Sky, I have her at a speed of 4,000 RPMs. Along with that, I am using the Profiles Backstage Mandrel Bit and Sanding Band. These are the purple ones in medium grit. They are super fine, so I love using the medium grit for my prep work. I feel like it gets it done very quickly but also avoids any damage to the natural nail as they are super fine so i'm just going in very gently back and forth i do try to lift my e-file up constantly to prevent any heat spikes which is absolutely recommended i'm gonna go ahead and do the other hand as well if you guys are having issues e-filing i have a video that goes really in depth on all of kind of my tips and tricks on how to e-file so make sure you guys check that out i have a playlist specifically for beginner nail techs that might be struggling with anything beginner related so also check that out uh, don't forget all my videos are super organized and i have tons to watch so make sure you guys check out all my playlists. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish buffing off the nail and then for our next part of prep, I'm going to be working on the cuticle area. Now when it comes to the cuticle area, you might feel like you don't have to do too much work especially when working on clients that have hands like this my sister luckily has you know very minimal cuticles the growth isn't terrible at all whatsoever so i am still going in just to make sure that i get everything off this is going to be crucial when it comes to the product adhesion so if even though you feel like you might be good always go in and double check. So I'm going in with my needle bit from Amazon and I have my e-file still at 4,000 RPMs and I am gently just going around that cuticle area and seeing if I can get any cuticle off that I might have missed with my mandrel bit. Now I'm going in with my cuticle ball bit. This one is going to help gently buff off the cuticle. I don't like nipping and I've mentioned it tons before. I don't like nipping or cutting any cuticles off. So I love using this as an alternative. I have now moved my speed up to 5,000 RPMs and I'm just gently filing away at the cuticle. This is going to help remove any dead skin from the area without having to cut anything off. So definitely recommend this one. It is one of my favorites. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other hand as well. Once I'm done prepping her natural nail, we are going in and applying the tips. These are the extra long C-curve tips from Not Polish in the square shape. She has requested square shaped nails. I'm so excited. I am applying these with my Young Nails brush on glue. It is my favorite. I love that I can just grab the brush and apply where I need to. I cannot stand a little bottle that I gotta squeeze stuff out of, so check these out for sure. It is a must in my books. Now when applying these tips, I do recommend you apply a generous amount of glue. They are super C-curved, so you want to make sure that it adheres really, really well to their natural nail, especially if their natural nails aren't super curved. And what I like to do as well is really press down those corners on each side to make sure that it is fully, fully adhered. And then if I see any little bubbles, I go right back in with my brush on glue and just apply a little bit more right where I see the air bubbles. 
and that's going to help really adhere them onto the natural nail. You want to make sure there's zero air bubbles all the time because that can cause moisture to be trapped in there and you want to avoid that at all costs. If you guys are familiar with what greenies are, that is going to cause greenies if you do not fully cover that natural nail. So make sure you guys are really focusing on that. Once I'm done applying my tips, I'm gonna go ahead and ask her what length she wanted. And she basically pointed at kind of midway, a little bit past that. So I'm just taking my nail tip cutters and eyeballing it, cutting them to the length that she has requested. And then I'm just going from the first cut and basing it off of that onto the rest of the nails. So a quick little tip when it comes to cutting tips, I like to hold the excess tip down and it prevents the tip from flying everywhere. So I'll do that depending on whether I think it's gonna fly or not. But that's kind of a good little thing to keep an eye out on. Um, I hate tips flying all over the place, so I just hold it on to it gently and then it kind of directs it downwards instead of up. Now I'm going to be lightly filing the nails just to make sure that everything is nice and flush to her natural nail. And then of course, because you've cut the tip off, it can be a little bit on the rounded side or just kind of messed up from the original cut. So I'm taking my hand file and just gently filing the tip as well, making sure that the square shape is nice and squared. That way my application goes on very smoothly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that on the rest of the nails. Now we are going to be doing ombre for today's video. So I am quickly taking my mandrel bit and a sanding band once again. E-file still at 5,000 RPMs. I'm gently blending the tip to her natural nail. This is just gonna help have a nice and smooth surface. When it comes to applying acrylic, it's gonna help tremendously. It's not necessarily important if you're doing full color, but when it comes to ombre, I definitely try to do that. I'm just cleaning the surface of the nail with a lint-free wipe and some swipe. This is going to help remove any excess dust while dehydrating the natural nail, which is a crucial step when it comes to product adhesion and prep. Now, once I'm done cleaning that surface, I'm going in with my primer. This is a triple X bond from Not Polish. Absolutely love it. It has worked really well with all of my clients, so highly recommend this one. I'm going in with one coat first, kind of scrubbing it into her natural nail, and then immediately after with a second coat. You can do all 10 fingers and then come back and do the second coat, but it just depends on what I'm feeling and how I'm feeling <laughs> that I go in directly with the second coat. Now getting right into our acrylic application. For the first nail, we are going to be doing Sunkissed as our yellow. 
and I'm just applying that on the tip. This is from Not Polish. For today's video, I am using the Not Polish acrylic monomer along with their size 12 acrylic brush. Absolutely love all of their products. I feel like I talk about them the most on my channel. So if you guys haven't gotten the hint yet, I absolutely love working with their products. So I'm going in and adding a good amount of acrylic onto the tip, making sure that I am focusing on my shape as well. I like to try to work as clean as possible. So you'll see me really making sure that that acrylic is nice and flat, nice and flush, all that good stuff. I'm going in with my nude. This is first nude from Not Polish. I've been obsessed with this color. It goes with every freaking skin tone possible. So if you guys are looking for a good nude, this one is my favorite. I'm going in and applying that as my ombre. I basically am adding two beads of acrylic, one right in the middle, blending it down into the yellow, and then one in the cuticle area. And as you can see, I'm really focusing on cleaning that up, making sure that it's nice and smooth. Now for our ring finger, this is gonna be our accent nail with some 3D nail art. So I'm making sure that I am going to be just doing a bare nude color on the background so that the nail art kind of pops out, if that makes sense. So I'm using a medium sized bead of acrylic on the tip, blending it down towards the tip and making sure that the thickness is nice and perfect to my liking. And then we're gonna be building it up towards the cuticle area. Now for the middle finger, we are using Neon Ninjas, which is one of my favorite pastel greens to use. It's so pretty. I feel like it is the perfect pastel green in my opinion. Again, medium sized bead of acrylic right where the tip meets the natural nail. And then I work my way down towards the tip, making sure that I am cleaning it up, scoring everything off and making sure that it is nice and perfect. Now I'm going in with my nude color once again, right above the, our first bead and then gently blending it down. When working with really good products, you don't have to do too much work. I am focusing on holding the finger in a downward position. This is gonna help flow the product naturally down towards the tip instead of into the cuticle, which is what you want. And it's gonna help you ultimately achieve a better ombre effect. So I'm just going in with my last bead of acrylic near the cuticle area, again, holding it in a downward position, making sure that I'm cleaning it up, blending it out nicely, and then cleaning any little areas that need to be clean. At this point, I will add any acrylic if needed. Now for the index finger, I am using Blooming Mint from Not Polish as well. Again, at the tip, and then I'm working my way up with the nude color at the cuticle area and the natural nail. Focusing on holding the finger in a downward position again, and then I'm just gently blending it downwards. Now I did wanna mention that I make reference to sizes of beads a lot in my videos. If you are new to my channel and wondering what the heck I'm talking about, make sure you guys check out, like I mentioned before, the beginner nail tech series, as I have a liquid to powder ratio, and that'll kinda of give you more of an idea of what what I'm talking about so make sure you guys check out all those videos Now for our thumb, we are using a more of a blue shade. I absolutely love this color as well. This one is called Azure, something like that. It is number 107 for my probably mispronunciation that I just did. <laughs> so all powders are from Not Polish. As you can tell, I've loved working with their stuff. 
I'm adding that on the tip and then again creating that ombre with the nude powder. I'm going to be sharing with you guys the process on the other hand as well so you guys can kind of really get the gist of exactly what I'm doing. But make sure you guys invest in really good products. They're going to help you tremendously if you are struggling with your acrylic application. Whether we want to believe it or not, product is absolutely crucial when it comes to changing your acrylic application game. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch the rest of this process and then get right back on whenever I feel it is necessary.
once we are done with our base acrylic design i am going in and encapsulating a lot of people do not encapsulate and that is okay I always talk about the importance of finding your ways that work for you. Whether I suggest something or not, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. So by all means, do things that feel comfortable and work best for you. However, I feel like if I add clear on top of my ombre, it's going to not only add the thickness that I want, but it's going to protect that ombre effect that I just created. Whenever I go into file, I'm not having to be scared that I'm going to accidentally file off any ombre that I created so just a quick little insight on that and I do also add it on my nude as you can tell that I did do that and again just to add the extra thickness that I might need a lot of the time I like to save product which means adding more clear on top of the color so I'm gonna go ahead and finish that this is the clear from not polish Once our acrylic is nice and dry, we are going to start our filing process. For this step, I have now moved my e-file up to 9,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using my Kiara Sky 5-in-1 bit in the color rose gold. Check out their bits. They are my all-time favorite. I have yet to find a 5-in-1 bit that I absolutely love and adore just as much as I love this one. So just to give you guys an idea of how obsessed I am with it, make sure you guys check it out. I'm going in very gently around the cuticle area, making sure that the acrylic is nice and flush to her natural nail. And then I'm going vertically up and down the length of the nail, very, very gentle on my pressure, making sure that I'm not applying too much pressure as that can really mess up your acrylic thickness. And I'm not trying to remove bulk. I'm just trying to smooth everything out nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that on the rest of the nails.
surrounded by the lights. We came to shine here. Watch it look daytime in the night. We bring the vibes here. We full of life, you keep the change, keep the change. They hate and say we went and changed. I stay the same. You must be blinded by the lights. You must be blinded by the lights. lights. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going in with my final shaping process. I'm using my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file for this step. I like to go in on one side, then go in the other, alternating from left to right, right to left, to make sure that I don't over file one side or the other. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails and always, always, always make sure you turn the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective. I unfortunately cannot show that process on my videos with my clients because it goes out of frame i eventually will add it in here so bear with me but if you're curious as to what i'm talking about you can see that process on any of my practice hand videos i'm gonna go ahead and finish that off and then we will be moving on to our nail art I'm doing me is do or die. You must be blinded by the lights. We came to shine here. Watch it look daytime in the night. We bring the vibes here. We full of life, you keep the change, keep the change. They hate and say we went and change. I stay the same. You must be blinded by the lights. You must be blinded by the lights. lights. Now we're cleaning the surface of the nail with the lint-free wipe and some swipe. This is gonna help remove any excess dust from her fingers and her nails and prep for our nail art. Now we are going to be doing some more 3D nail art on my sister's nails. We are starting off by applying some brush on glue from Young Nails. I'm just doing two little dots. We're gonna be using one medium sized crystal and then a smaller one up top that's going to be making the body for the butterfly. And I'm just kind of placing one up top and then one near the bottom. And we're gonna be building out the petals using acrylic. So I'm just using a crystal tool picker little thing and applying those crystals very gently. The crystals are from Profiles Backstage, so make sure you guys check them out. They are the AB ones. Now I'm going in with my white acrylic. This is Ice Queen from Not Polish. Along with that, I'm using my 3D nail art brush from Amazon. It's my OG 3D nail art brush. I've had this bad boy for five years almost now and it's still going strong so i'm gonna keep it around until it fully gives out on me but i'm going in and adding two small beads of acrylic the one on top is a lot smaller than the bottom one and i'm basically doing like flower petals for the wings very very simple yet super cute i'm just making sure that i am pressing down firmly on that middle section that's going to help move the product outwards which kind of gives that effect of it being thinner right at the center i'm going to go ahead and finish these off do the other hand as well
We're going in with our top coat. This is Glossed from Not Polish. She decided on shiny nails. And I'm just adding a very thin layer of that onto the surface of the nails. When top coating nails that have nail art like this, I go very, very carefully around the nail art. I prefer to not top coat it because it takes away from the texture, which can kind of compromise the end result of the nail art. My personal preference, now if the client absolutely wants me to top coat the nail art, I will. However, if they don't say anything, I always recommend to not top coat it. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my top coat. I am placing it in the light after that for one minute. I like to do two minutes most of the time just to make sure everything is nice and cured. And then of course we are adding cuticle oil at the very end. I forgot to record that portion, but I'm using the Profiles Backstage Cuticle Oil. That is my absolute favorite and I'm not gonna stop saying that because it really is. It smells so, so good and it melts right into the skin without leaving an oily cast, which is absolutely crucial for getting good videos and photos of your work. That basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye.